The following is an introduction to OpenCL Studio. In a nutshell, this tool acts as the front end for the parallel compute devices in your system. For the most part, it's the graphics card, but it could also be the CPU or any other device that supports uh, OpenCL. So the main features are that it encapsulates the OpenCL parallel programming language and the OpenGL rendering language to give you a head start on developing uh, applications for these types of compute devices. And on top of that, OpenCL Studio also comes with a uh, open source parallel algorithm library. So what I will do now is uh, introduce the main features of the editor and then in subsequent tutorials cover various aspects in more detail. So right now you're looking at the editor and in the middle here in the 3D view you can see a real-time fluid simulation. Now you can interact with this fluid uh, simply by tilting the screen and basically changing gravity or you can go to the user interface here and uh, change various parameters or have a look at uh, different rendering buffers. Now this type of fluid simulation is uh, fairly complex. It uh, requires a particle system to model the fluid and then after that it requires several rendering steps to achieve this transparent and reflective water look. Now all of this has been built within the framework of OpenCL Studio, including the OpenCL programs, the uh, OpenGL shaders, the user interface, and all the logic required to tie all this together at the end. So what I will do now is I will open a different application, but first I have to stop this one by hitting the reset button and now the editor has switched into editing mode and here is where you actually construct your application so you can lay out the user interface you can add new building blocks and if you'd like to run the simulation you just hit play and your application is running again so we'll now go to file open application and here you're looking at a workspace so open sales studio support has a workspace infrastructure that allows you to manage several projects at the same time. And this is the default workspace that you will see uh, when you start OpenCL Studio for the first time. And in here, there is an application called Particles, which I will open now. So we're now looking at another application. This one here is a particle simulation. It is uh, somewhat less complicated than the fluid simulation we have seen earlier and as such, uh, much better suited for illustrating the features of the editor. So OpenCL Studio follows much the same philosophy as your typical IDE. There is a tree view here on the left-hand side that contains all of the building blocks of an application. And then here on the bottom, there is an, an output pane that contains various types of status messages and compiler errors. Um, there's also a property sheet for each one of the nodes in the tree view. And then over here in the center, you have a uh, different views of the application. We already know the 3D view, but there's also a script view, a code view, and over here at the end, there is an interactive help browser that documents the entire scripting API of OpenCL Studio, as well as any third-party plugins or the LibCL uh, open source parallel algorithm library. So I will now go through the tree view here and talk a little bit about each one of these nodes in here. So on the top, there is the camera. And this is basically the camera you're looking through to see this 3D scene here. And you can change the camera position using the mouse and the keyboard, or you can revisit uh, you know, previously defined viewpoints. Uh, below the camera, there is a frame buffer. So basically the scene is rendered into a buffer on the GPU and then you can use this buffer for example to do post-processing effects or if you add more than one frame buffer under the camera it'll automatically render the scene several times into each one of these buffers and during each rendering step you can then collect different information about the scene. Um, this is basically what happened in the fluid demo we saw earlier in order to achieve that nice water effect. Um, I do not want to talk much about this in this uh, video right now, but there will be other tutorials that will cover frame buffers in more depth. So below the frame buffer, we have the OpenCL subtree. And this one contains all the OpenCL related elements of this application. So right after I selected the root node right here, it will show you right here all of the compute devices in this system. Right now it's the NVIDIA GPU and the Intel CPU. And over here you can see the OpenCL specific capabilities of this device. 
Then below here, we have a number of one dimensional buffers. You can of course also add 2D and 3D buffers. And below them, there is a program node. And as soon as you select the program, you can see certain profiling information here. And if you'd like to see the source code of this program, you have to click on the code tab. So we're now looking at the OpenCL kernel code of this uh, fluid simulation. And it contains a number of uh, different uh, kernels you can browse through here. And the great thing is that you can change this code on the fly without having to recompile the program. You don't even have to reset the uh, simulation. I'm going to illustrate this here by changing the sign of gravity. And after I've done that, I compile my change, go over to the scene view, and as you'd expect, the particles are now falling into the opposite direction. So let me go back and undo my change. And if I happen to introduce a syntax error here, and try to compile it, down here in the output pane, it'll show me an error message. And when I click on the error message, it'll take me straight to the, er to the uh, area where this error has occurred. And I can now fix my error and compile. Okay, so let's move on now. Back in the scene view, you can see the simulation has stopped. That's because an error has occurred. All I have to do is press the run button and it starts again. So now over here, below the OpenCL subtree is the OpenGL subtree. So this one basically contains all your 3D visualization components, uh, including shaders, triangle meshes, textures, point sets, what have you. And in this particular example, the first node here is a shader. When I select this one, and I click on the code tab, you can now see the OpenGL shading language source code for this particular shader. There is a vertex and a fragment shader, and similar to the kernel code, you can change the shader on the fly, and any type of errors are pointed out to you down here in the output pane. If I now look at the property sheet of this shader, you can see there's a little browser right here from which you can select uh, predefined shaders. And over here, you can actually uh, turn this into a geometry shader and specify uh, various other aspects. So back to the scene view, following the shader is a texture. And similar on here, you can specify as a browser that allows you to select certain textures. Uh, you can even stream videos into a texture. And then over here, you can specify uh, various other uh, properties about this texture. Following a texture is a point set. Uh, this one here contains various types of attributes. Um, by default, every point set contains uh, X, Y, Z coordinates. And the point set is used in this application here to model the particle system. And down here, there is two additional attribute buffers to find, and these will contain the velocity for every particle and the color for every particle. And you can see the names here, such as GS attribute, for example. This is a special name, a reserved name, and you can access this attribute within a shader. So just to go quickly back to the shader source code, and you can see here GS attribute. So there is a relationship between the nodes in the tree view here and the, the kernel code and the shaders and the scripts. So back to the point set here, there is another entry field that's called dimension. And this one uh, contains a variable here called particle count rather than a fixed value. And uh, I will show you later where this uh, variable is declared. So we'll come back to this node. We follow the point set, there's another shader. Um, then there's a material node. And following that, there is a group node containing a number of triangle meshes below it. So if I reset the application now and then select one of these triangle meshes, OpenCL Studio automatically attaches a manipulator to this mesh. And you can use this manipulator to position, scale, and rotate these uh, 3D objects. So there are rudimentary 3D modeling capabilities built right into the editor. So following the OpenGL subtree is the GUI subtree. And this one allows you to construct a 2D user interface that's overlaid on the 3D rendering here in the background. And if I do a right mouse click right here, it shows you all of the interface widgets that are available to you. And since this application doesn't have an interface, I will just quickly construct a little GUI. So I just insert the window, I can resize it. And then below the window, I'll insert a tab control and maybe a couple of tab items. And then under one of the tabs, I'll insert a button. So when you now hit start, this GUI becomes active. 
Okay, and uh, you can change the widgets, press the buttons, and close the windows. So this entire GUI is rendered in OpenGL and overlays the, the, the 3D environment in the background. So now I'd like to talk about scripting. And the, the most important thing to understand is that all these nodes here in the tree view, they are objects in the programming sense. That means that they have an API and you can call this API via the Lua scripting language. In order to do that, we now have to move over to the script tab. So you're now looking at the scripting interface of OpenCL Studio, which is built around this concept of a script processor. Uh, every script processor consists 32 registers, which are arranged in this grid on the top of the screen here. And what you can do is you can drag and drop any object from the tree view into any one of these registers. And after you've done so, you can see here on the right hand side, it lists you all of the event that this object generates. And when you select an event handler, you can now go over here and implement uh, some logic in the Lua scripting language. So the first thing to note here is that the object that generates this event is, a, is accessible within the event handler via the variable called event. So if I type in event, colon, now up pops a code completion window that documents the entire API of this object, in this case, a window. Another thing you can do within here, you can access all the other objects in the tree view simply by creating an identifier based on the path to that node in the tree view. So for example, if I type in camera dot, up comes frame buffer, colon, and now I'm accessing the frame buffer object under the camera. So besides the objects in the tree view, you can also access uh, Lua packages from within the scripting window. And some of these packages are intrinsic to OpenCL Studio, such as uh, CL. This package uh, basically encapsulates the uh, OpenCL API. You might recognize uh, these functions here. Uh, this package very much mirrors the same function names and signatures as in the OpenCL specifications. Um, but then there's also Lua intrinsic packages, such as math, because math functions uh, and IO. And then there's also a third party packages such as uh, XML, allows you to read XML files, um, or volume to read volumetric data sets. And the third party plugins are listed here under the help tab, under the plugin sub tab. You can see all of the, the extensions that are installed. And if you develop a conformant DLL and drop it into the right directory under the uh, uh, current workspace, then you will see your own DLL listed here and you can actually call uh, your own DLL from within the scripting interface. So I think it should be mentioned here that OpenCL Studio is actually quite extensible, um, not only through your own Lua packages, but also through the uh, open source libcl parallel algorithm library. And there are tutorials available that will show you uh, how to do that. So now let me get back to the script processors. Uh, if one of them isn't enough, you can easily add additional processors here via the tree view and a right mouse click. And then if you've done so, they'll just appear here as different tabs. And you can drag and drop objects into any one of these processors multiple times. And on top of this toolbar here, you also have uh, search and replace functions that allow you to manage you know, uh, larger code bases. So now I would quickly like to talk about this global pane down here at the bottom. And this one contains application and processor global scripts. While the event handlers up here in these processors, they're really only called when the application is running. Um, but the scripts down here, they're called when the application is first loaded. In particular, the application global script, it is called uh, before even the nodes in the tree view are instantiated. So you can here truly declare global variables and one of them is particle count. And this variable, we have seen this earlier here, in uh, the property sheet of our point set, the dimensions. So particle count, bucket count, they're used all over uh, these buffers and uh, uh, rendering constructs. And basically all you have to do is change this variable here once, reset the application, and the particle system has a different number of points. 
So now let's have a look at an actual event handler of this particular particle system simulation. And now I'll go over here and select the register that contains the OpenCL node. And you can see here in the on time event handler, there's quite an extensive Lua script. And this one basically executes all the kernels that are necessary to simulate one step of this particle system. And as you can see here, it uses the CL package quite extensively to enqueue a number of different kernels, set parameters, and so forth. And the great thing is you can change this uh, kernel code on the fly without having to recompile the program or even reset the simulation. So this basically wraps up my introduction to OpenCL Studio. I think I've touched upon most of the features of the editor. There are additional uh, videos available on the website that will touch upon various aspects in more detail. So, but before I stop, I will now go on and open a few of the other demo applications that come with a download and uh, discuss uh, some of the, the features in each one of them. Okay, so I will now go ahead and open the another application, the image abstraction demo. When I start the application, you can see now this one makes a you know, fairly extensive use of the user interface widgets. Uh, this one does not have any 3D rendering. Uh, but it does use a number of windows and under these windows there are canvases and you can directly pass a canvas to an OpenCL kernel and uh, write values into the canvas that will then appear here on the screen and this is what's happening in this demo. This demo also lets you load uh, different images which is happening via the Lua scripting interface uh, using the uh, image.dll uh, Lua plugin. Now the source code for this plugin actually comes with uh, the uh, installation of OpenCL Studio. You'll find it under the workspace directory and you can change it uh, to either add your own image formats or use it as a guide to develop your own plugins. So okay, let's move ahead and open another one. I will now open the video processing demo. Now this demo is somewhat similar to the uh, previous one, except that here um, we're using the uh, streaming uh, uh, plugin for uh, OpenCL Studio. Again, the source code does come for this plugin. And here you can just switch between different type of video processing uh, algorithms. Now let me open the last demo I will show here, and that is the volumetric rendering demo. And you'll find this in the workspace under where is it? On the volume right up here. So this application uh, actually shows a volumetric uh, rendering here. And this means that we're using a 3D data set that's being loaded into an uh, uh, OpenCL buffer. And then there's an OpenCL kernel that, that, that produces this, uh, this rendering via ray casting for this volume. Um, it does have a little bit of an interface. And uh, here there is a window which you can look at individual slices of that volume data set. And down here you can change various rendering parameters. So I will stop right here. I'll leave it up to you to explore the remaining demos that come with the download and have a look at the other video tutorials.